Backward compatible games on Xbox One. A lot of people love this feature to be able to play these older games that we had on Xbox 360. And sure, it does bring back a lot of good memories for those of us that got to experience some of the greatest games that came out a few years ago when the Xbox 360 was at its peak. Anyways, as far as backwards compatibility goes, the fact of the matter is, these games were meant to be played on Xbox 360 and not entirely on the X1. In short, backwards compatibility is far from perfect, and today I'm going to talk about three key issues that need to be addressed at some point, and these are not in any particular order, I'm just going to list them one by one. So the first key issue is being disconnected from Xbox Live, specifically error code 800707A, which has been a significant issue a few times in the past two years from the time of making this video. In particular, in March of 2018, it was impossible for some players to sign into their profile on Xbox 360, which of course meant no multiplayer for those backwards compatible games on Xbox One either, because you could not connect to Xbox Live on the 360 menu to sign in. That lasted for a few weeks for some players. Even I was affected by it when this happened. Also, on a side note, being disconnected randomly from Xbox Live on any backwards compatible game happens on a consistent basis. I can't tell you how many times I have been disconnected on a 360 game on Xbox One, or how many times it said, congrats, you've been disconnected from Xbox Live. <laughs> and yet, I hardly ever get disconnected from Xbox Live when I am playing an Xbox One game. And Microsoft has offered no solution to this reoccurring problem, it just seems awfully convenient that this mainly happens on Xbox 360 and on Xbox One through backwards compatible games. My theory has always been Microsoft has been trying to push people away from the last generation Xbox 360 and into Xbox One or Xbox One games. Think about it. If it was a basic issue, one would think, hey, it's a billion dollar company, they'll figure it out and fix it. But no, that hasn't been the case at all. This has been going on for a few years now. And still, there's been no solution to this major problem. Anyways, moving on to another key issue, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this one because we all know about modding and it's always going to be a problem. And I think we all know by now that modding is way more frequent on the Xbox 360 slash backwards compatible games in general because it's way easier to mod on the older 360 console. And as far as a partial solution, Really the only thing that can be done is shutting the servers down on the Xbox 360 because the biggest reason behind the modding on the 360 is the USB drives which don't work the same way on the Xbox One so shutting down the servers on the older 360 console would definitely help and reduce the modding by an estimated 80% so this would definitely make some backwards compatible games more playable multiplayer wise on the Xbox One. And the last key issue with backwards compatibility I wanted to mention is the game chat. So if you were in a Xbox One party chat and you were playing a backward compatible game, you will still hear sounds from game chat as you are in a Xbox One chat party. And it also disrupts any game sounds like footsteps, gunshots, things like that. So in other words, you are forced to mute people mid-game or in a pre-game lobby for the most part. At moments, this can be the most frustrating thing ever. When motherfuckers are blaring music from a radio into their microphone. When people are speaking different languages. When tryhards lose their mind because somebody made a tent and had a campfire. When a little kid is screaming because the world has come to an end. And I know somebody is going to say just mute them. Let me tell you something. Muting people is different on a lot of games, especially older games. And it isn't like Call of Duty World War II where you just hit one button and the whole lobby is muted. Depending on the game, you usually have to mute people one at a time. For example, a game like Call of Duty World at War, you can mute people one at a time during a game. But during the next pre-game lobby, they will not be muted anymore. On top of that, you will have to go all the way to their profile just to mute that one person to keep them muted. Also, in case you didn't know, backwards compatible game sounds and game chat sounds, those sounds are even louder on Xbox One if you go to game chat. So trust me when I say this, when a little kid is yelling at the top of his lungs and you have your headset on, well, 
I hope you have some Tylenol because you are going to have one hell of a headache. So anyways, those are the three main issues I have with backwards compatibility. And I wish something would get done to make it a better experience for some of these older games that I like to play every once in a while. But I'm not going to expect anything because I do not believe in Microsoft to say the least. Anyways, that just about does it. Thanks for checking this video out. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.